Y que tengo mucho miedo. ¿De qué? De lo que digan los exámenes. Pues sí. No puedo controlar eso. No. No podemos. But um, I mean, I think fundamentally, my mom went in the went into the disease like with a lot of courage, and she was like really strong about it, and she was really like determined to just try to get through it somehow, try to find some sort of resolution. But because of how poorly she was treated, you know, she lost a lot of her of her strength, a lot of her energy about it. And she just got really depressed, you know, and just depressed, and unfriendly, and towards the end, just really angry about I think all that had happened. And, the night before we went, I had to go to the hospital. My mom was just like freaking out. And she was just like crying and like screaming at me. And she was like, I don't want to go to the hospital. I don't want to go. They treat me like a dog. I hate being there. Don't make me go. And it was before we found out she was dying. So it was, it was when I thought we had a chance, you know, we had a chance to try to um, get through cancer and, you know, and have her be okay, you know. The day we found out she was dying, we waited for eight hours. And that, you know, that was, that was impossible. I remember, you know, we drove to the hospital, we just sat in the car together, you know, really tense and anxious, you know, knowing that, you know, going with the understanding that they were going to tell us whether she was going to live or not, but then also knowing that she probably didn't have a chance to survive. Um, and then my mom, the other part that my mom had trouble with is, is I was sitting there with her and she hated it. She hated the idea that I was suffering with her. And um, it was hard for her to understand that, like, because we love each other and because we want to be there for each other, I'm more than happy to sit there. And I had my magazines and my iPod, and I just, you know, I sat there with her because that meant a lot to me. Just be able to be with her and, and uh, support her, you know, whatever way I could. Mira, me lo pone aquí y cuando estoy más desesperada de mi enfermedad, me lo pone allí. ¿No te gusta, mamá? No, sí, pues como me ha de gustar, pues si no, sin pintar y todo hasta allá. Pues qué, qué importa. Ay, gracias, es todo. My mother always struggled to be personalized, to be looked at like a human being, to be looked at as someone that should receive the best treatment available rather than just like another patient or another number, you know. And often I would always, um, you know, I'd always tell her like, we don't have time for that. We need to, we got like five minutes to this doctor who has like 30 other patients. We need to be efficient. We need to um, ask questions that you're concerned about, gather as much information as we can and think about what are the next steps for your treatment, you know. And while it hurt me to like do that because I wanted her to feel like a human being we just didn't have time for that. Thank <laughs> you. 
él es que lo que lo que no ay ya 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 ay 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 ya Entonces, ya nos vamos. And so we drove to the hospital and I saw her and she had an oxygen thing and she just, her eyes, she couldn't open her eyes really well and she just looked exhausted and tired and, and terrible. And, uh, I mean, that was really hard, seeing her like that. And then knowing that we were getting closer to the end. So it was then when I was like, shit, like she's not going to survive uh, to the end of the year. You know, we're way too far along. One of the most difficult aspects of my mother's death is that the most striking and thus prominent memories are of the indignity she faced in public health facilities and her agony as the cancer slowly snaked through her vital organs. Through the kindness and influence of my dear friends, now when I think of my mom, I instead strive to focus on the gentle moments and I would lay with her and listen and give her whatever comfort I could. I would hold her hand as we waited hours for the doctors, those kind and tender moments where we were closer than I ever knew we could be. I have also been reminded to focus on the new dawn in the midst of the difficulty, to have compassion and not to forget to allow myself to have some joy. As a survivor, there is a certain guilt over enjoying herself too much, but as a friend brought to my attention on a particularly difficult birthday, my mother would want me to be happy. Thank you.